In the 7th century, Iona was a well-equipped university. It was making a huge impact both here in the British Isles and further afield. England as a country did not exist then. It was split into different regions or areas. And the local king, King Oswald of Northumbria, sent a message to Iona requesting that a missionary be sent here. Aidan, who had been trained in Iona, was sent down here and when he arrived, he requested of the king if he could set up his training school here on the island of Lindisfarne. Lindisfarne lies 235 miles from Iona, which if traveled by foot would take over a week. It is also known as the Holy Island, though it's not completely isolated from the mainland. It's a tidal island, approximately 1,000 acres, three miles long and 1.5 miles wide, and twice a day when the tide comes in, the island is isolated. There is something about the solitude and isolation of being on an island that these early missionaries seem to value, a place to come aside, rest, study, and be equipped for mission service. Aidan was well balanced in character. He was strong in religious fervor. He was very industrious and it was said that he was never idle. In him was that living flame which burned so strong in many of the missionaries that were sent out by Patrick and Columba. He was deeply concerned for the poor and spent much of his life in an effort of ransoming slaves. You see, he had a very practical faith. He did for England what Columba had done for Scotland. In establishing the training centre here, the fields were used to give work to support the students. They also established other training centres in places like Melrose and Whitby. Aidan was succeeded by Finnan, and he established a training centre in Tilbury in Essex and was instrumental in evangelising central England. Finnan was succeeded by Coleman. And in 30 years, these three men did a powerful work here in England and paganism was swept away and replaced by New Testament religion. These great men were not monks as we would understand today, but missionaries maintaining the faith that they had learned on Iona. In Truth Triumphant, page 127, it reads, it is no exaggeration to say that with the exception of Kent and Sussex, the whole English race received the foundation of their faith from Celtic missionaries. You see, in 30 years, these men took the gospel to the country of England, and almost three quarters was won by their missionary work. They did this in an age where they had no internet, no TVs, no modern forms of communication that we have. Today, God has placed us in different parts of this country, in different parts of the world, and he's given to us his word, he's given to us the message that he wants to be taken to every nation, tongue and people. May we be faithful in our local churches and in the communities that our churches are placed in that we would take the message and share it with those who have not heard that Jesus can come soon.